This lecture will describe the classic chest x-ray findings that are associated with congestive heart failure. Congestive heart failure can produce a myriad of findings on plain chest radiography. Which findings are present depends on the severity of the patient's condition. On an erect posterior anterior chest x-ray, suggestive findings include cardiomegaly, which does not necessarily need to be present, vascular redistribution, that is, the syphilization of blood flow, pulmonary venous congestion, pulmonary interstitial edema, pleural effusions, and in more severe disease, alveolar edema, which is not clearly evident on this radiograph. Cardiomegaly, particularly in concert with other findings, is a suggestive feature of congestive heart failure. However, keep in mind that congestive heart failure can occur in the presence of a normal-sized heart. Cardiomegaly is said to be present when the cardiothoracic ratio is greater than 0.5, that is, when the largest transverse distance between the left and right heart borders of the cardiac silhouette is greater than half the width of the thorax. In this image, the cardiothoracic ratio is approximately 0.6. Now, you should also be aware that on anterior posterior films, determination of heart size is unreliable due to magnification. Vascular redistribution is one of the first signs of congestive heart failure. Increased blood flow to pulmonary vessels in the upper lung zones results in an increase in size relative to blood vessels in the lower lung zones. This caudal to cranial redistribution of blood flow should only be inspected for in an erect x-ray, since equalization of blood flow may occur in the supine position. The finding of upper lobe blood diversion, however, can be difficult to appreciate on a plain radiograph. One other way that it can be identified is by the discovery of a superior lobe artery with a greater diameter than its accompanying bronchus. Now, since it is hard to be certain on this radiograph, this example should be taken for illustrative purposes. The bronchus is the ring-like structure with a hollow center, while the artery is filled in. Normally, the upper lobe artery to bronchus ratio is less than 1 to 1. Here the reverse is seen, with a larger artery than bronchus. You may have also noticed the prominence of the hilar region and the widening of the vascular pedicle in this radiograph. The fullness of the right hilum is particularly evident, whereas the left hilum is predominantly obscured by an enlarged cardiac silhouette. Unlike with lymph node enlargement, in which case the hilar can appear as a large lumpy mass, the hilar region in this x-ray has irregular borders due to thickened outward branching vessels. The increase in hilar size, as well as the vascular pedicle widening in this x-ray, are due to pulmonary venous congestion. An edematous interstitium is another important feature of congestive heart failure. Three signs of thickened interstitial tissue include curly beelines, peribronchial cuffing, and interlobal fissure thickening. Curly beelines are fine linear opacities that are only 1-2 to two millimeters in width. They are typically located peripherally in the lower lung fields near the costophrenic angles. When viewed close up, they can be seen to extend perpendicularly inwards from the pleura and are up to 3 cm in length. These opacities can also be seen head-on, in which case they are referred to as curly C-lines, or radiating outward from the hyla, in which case they are called curly A-lines. Peribronchial cuffing is another discrete finding which occurs due to edema of the bronchial wall. When viewed head-on, it appears as a donut or a ring. When viewed tangentially, that is, from the side, it appears as two parallel lines, which to some extent resemble tram tracks. Note that peribronchial cuffing can occur in other conditions as well, such as chronic bronchitis. Also evident in this image is a thickened minor that is horizontal fissure. This finding is easier to detect on a lateral radiograph where both the oblique and horizontal fissures may be visible. Collectively, interstitial edema results in widespread blurring of lung markings. The loss of definition results in a hazy appearance of the lung fields and hilum bilaterally. Now let's turn our attention to the bottom right corner of the radiograph. Note that there is a decrease in definition of the left costophrenic angle, a finding that is consistent with a pleural effusion. Here's another x-ray of congestive heart failure. In this case, there are bilateral pleural effusions which can be identified by the loss of costophrenic angles and obscured hemidiaphragms. Below the left lung, we see the meniscus sign, in which the opacity has a concave upper border and is higher laterally than medially. 
Alveolar edema is a more severe sign of congestive heart failure and is not clearly evident in this radiograph that we've thus far been examining. In this image, many of the aforementioned findings of congestive heart failure are present, plus alveolar edema, which classically results in central and symmetrical airspace disease. The outer third of the lung is frequently spared, resulting in a characteristic batwing configuration. However, the patterns of pulmonary opacification are variable and can be more or less diffuse and asymmetric or patchy. To quickly recap, the plain radiographic findings that can occur with congested heart failure include cardiomegaly, signs of vascular redistribution such as cephalization and increased artery to bronchus ratio in superior segments, signs of pulmonary vascular congestion such as hilar enlargement in a widened vascular pedicle, signs of pulmonary interstitial edema such as curly beelines, peribronchial cuffing, and interlobal fissure thickening, pleural effusions, and in more severe cases, alveolar edema.